how did you get to, to biology? You know, I grew up in Haifa, it's a small city, and I grew up just next to the mountain, you know, the city was not populated, and I walked in the afternoon and I collected lizards and snakes, and you know, this was prim it's primitive biology, it's not biology of these days, but uh, I was always wondered about the diversity of nature, how is it, why there is a snake? Wasn't it frustrating to work on the same thing for so many years? Yeah, you know what is a dog? Like something that goes on four feet and barks and... But dog has another thing, dog eats bones, you know, the dog eats bones. And the property of a good dog that it holds to the bone, you never let it go. Because if you hold the bone and you let it go, another dog will come. If you want to have the bone for yourself, hold it all the time. So I'm a dog and I'm holding the bone all my life. It's one bone called ubiquitin, and it turned out to be correct to hold it all the time because the system grows and grows and there are drugs and more people are coming in and I didn't change. You know, you have one wife, you're married to her for the rest of your life, I'm married to one wife and one molecule. That's it. You become an expert. You cannot become an expert if you jump. You cannot work one day on something else, and one day on this, and one day on that, and one day on that. You want to become an expert. I am the world expert on this molecule, not on the only one. Now, other people become, but I am the world expert. In order to become an expert, you need to focus. And you need to work out your way through it for a long, 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 long time. Then you are becoming an expert, then people are coming to you, then you are the source of knowledge, you are the inventor, you are everything, because you know everything. You know from day one, like growing a baby. You know the baby from the day it was incepted. So the, the idea of holding like a bone, you know, I was kind of joking, has a deep philosophy behind it. It's not, I do it knowingly and conscientiously. I, I'm into it. I will never leave this molecule alone. What do you think is the scientist's role in the society? And what do you think is the appropriate attitude of a scientist? You know, first of all, my ro scientist role is to dis make discoveries, important discoveries that will benefit human beings. Doing basic research that will expose basic mechanisms, and then others will come and translate it into drugs, into products, into... Everything we are using is the product of science. Everything that is around us is science. I think that secondary to science, because science, everybody understands it, and it doesn't matter whether you are from Korea, from Israel, from Japan, it doesn't matter. People understand that we are all have good intentions. Um, I think that scientists are excellent ambassadors to peace because they can, they can cross bridges very easily, very easily and make contracts and agreements and knowledge can flow back and forth, back and forth. And then I think they are the best also to understand moral issues. Uh, so they are not the only ones, the scientists, I, I think also social scientists, not only scientists that do bench work, I mean natural scientists. You know, people, theologists that study religions, historians, archaeologists. You know, we are human beings, we have roots in history, we, we didn't, I didn't start my life. You know, I belong to a nation that is 2,000 more years old, 4,000 years old, that has history and archaeology and we have neighbors, Arab neighbors, this. We, we are living in an environment and we need to understand the environment and we have to talk to the environment. And we are not isolated. And I think that even for people that maybe not seeing things one eye to eye, like the Israelis and the Arabs, talking science is something that can bring people together. I mean, because what's wrong about science? Do you think that science, science research should stop whenever the society has a problem or, bio, well, or there's bioethical issues? And democracy, the nature of democracy, that it has its own breaks. One is a moral break. I think that most of the people that grow up in democracy, most of them, not all of them, should be moral because they have the freedom of choice. And during the freedom of choice, I'm not, I'm not stealing your pen because I'm afraid that you call the police, because it's against my moral. In democracy, people, because they are not oppressed, because they are not pushed, because they are allowed to speak their minds, because they are allowed to fly, to write, to, to express themselves, they also develop moral principles. I behave well, not because I'm afraid of the police, but because I'm limited, I'm, I'm, I recognize that this is the way to go, this is the way to live together. So the same is true for science. I'm not doing immoral experiments, not because I'm afraid, I'm not, I will not clone human beings in my lab, 
Not because the police will come, because I think that this is crossing the limit. Uh, do you think there is a place for humor in science? You know, life is not about Nobel Prize, life is about life. And we need to appreciate the complexity of life and what it takes and uh, the humane aspect of it, the emotional aspect of it. It's not about just experiments, it's about, it's much more complex. And humor is a very important part of it. I mean, we cannot uh, live without it. But the only thing that, for me, science is about curiosity. I think that, I mean, you, I mean, it's about curiosity. You want to do something in your life. I mean, you want to contribute. You want to leave a heritage behind you. I think that if you solve a problem in science, this is an unbelievable source of satisfaction.